Let me ask you a question. What is robbing your energy? Well, how you live, the choices you make every day are probably hurting you more than you may know. Dr. Mark Stengler, acclaimed doctor, best-selling author and lecturer, known as America's natural doctor, has created an easy-to-follow guide to retaining the vitality of youth naturally. Anyone at any age can have a high-energy life. My recommendations will help most viewers achieve and maintain good memory, mood, and energy. Dr. Mark Stengler is the founder of the world-renowned Stengler Center for Integrative Medicine in Encinitas, California, and has treated tens of thousands of patients, including Olympic athletes, Hollywood movie stars, Fortune 500 CEOs, and people just like you. Please join us for the A to Z Guide to Healing Yourself with Dr. Mark Stengler. Well, thank you. I think I have shocking news for a lot of you. Actually, the truth is millions of you are suffering from inflammation. That's where you have damage occurring in your body. Your tissues are irritated. Your immune system's out of balance. So for example, let's say you have arthritis. You know, you're getting pain, you're getting stiffness, immobility. That's related to inflammation, whether you have osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, maybe even gout. The same thing with diabetes. Even if those blood sugar swings, blood sugar imbalances, you're having inflammation going on in your body, and that's one of the reasons why people with diabetes, they're more susceptible to other diseases. Then we have heart disease. Without a doubt, heart disease is greatly related to inflammation. You see, when you have inflammation going on in your arteries and your heart, that's causing damage. We need to stop that using natural therapies. So what we have to do is heal this inflammation. Treat the root causes rather than the symptoms. You see, the truth is, you actually can heal yourself. So let me talk to you about the triggers of inflammation. Nutritional imbalances. Did you know that two-thirds of the population have a vitamin D deficiency? So just being by depleted in this simple nutrient, you're going to have more inflammation setting in in the body. What a simple thing to treat. But first, you have to know it's a problem. It can be easily tested with a blood test. And there's many other nutrients. If you're low on them, they will contribute to inflammation, whether it be vitamin C, vitamin E, and the list goes on. And most Americans do have multiple nutritional deficiencies. Now here's probably a new one for most people, and that's poor digestion. So think about this for a second. If you're not breaking your food down effectively, you actually create metabolic toxins, which get into your bloodstream, get into your tissues, and that can create inflammation. There's other reasons too. For example, hormone imbalance. Now I see that a lot. So let's say you're a menopausal woman and you have low estrogen or low progesterone and you're going through the menopausal transition, all of a sudden you're starting to develop arthritis. It's probably related to hormone imbalance. And with men, we often see low testosterone, for example. One of the functions of testosterone is to keep inflammation down in the body. Or maybe you're like millions of Americans and you just have high stress levels for long periods of time and your stress hormones like cortisol or DHEA have become imbalanced. And your body needs these hormones to control inflammation. They keep your immune system balanced. So it's critical to have the stress hormones balanced as well as all your hormones. And there's other reasons as well as to why people get inflammation. For example, chronic infection can cause inflammation. Toxins, you know, we're bombarded by toxins in the environment. The food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, thousands and thousands of toxins. And so if you're getting toxic in your body, that's going to create inflammation. Okay, so these are all root factors you need to look at as to why you may be having inflammation and all the different conditions related to this inflammatory response. Now let's look at arthritis. You know, a very, very common condition in America obviously affects millions of Americans. And with arthritis, you get pain in the joints, some immobility, you might get some swelling. And again, we've got to treat that inflammation to stop why it's occurring. Let me give you a case example just to demonstrate this. I had a patient come to my clinic this past year. He had arthritis, joint pains all over his body. He was taking over-the-counter pain medicines, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These medications, they're not harmless. It can damage your stomach, your intestinal lining, your liver, your kidneys, even your heart. So what do you do with a guy like this? I mean, he has inflammation all over his body and we want to treat him naturally. Well, knowing that his diet wasn't very good, too many fast foods, too much alcohol after work, the occasional cigarette, 
what I decided to do with him was put him on a detoxification protocol for two weeks. Just simply improve his diet, getting in some more natural, healthy foods, increasing his water intake, getting more sleep, cutting down on the alcohol, not eating out as much. And lo and behold, he came in two weeks later, and yes, all, and I mean all, of his joint pain was gone. And see, you can get these kind of results too. They're not just unique to my patients, but that is treating the root cause of someone's health problem. And he doesn't need the pain medications anymore. We don't have to worry about him damaging his internal organs. Now here are some other things that will heal the inflammation that causes arthritis. And this probably is new news to a lot of you, and that is eating a pH balanced diet. pH basically means how acidic or how alkaline you know, a tissue or your blood is. And your body maintains a very narrow pH range in your blood. And it can vary more in your tissues. But suffice to say, with most Americans, we're too acidic. And when you're too acidic, you get more pain and inflammation. Okay? But the nice thing is, we can control that with natural therapies, starting with diet. So let me tell you how we, how we do that. There are certain foods Americans eat a lot of, which just cause acidity in the body, and more pain and inflammation. So things like meat, red meat, high amounts of salt, high amounts of sugar, for sure. Too many grains, especially refined carbohydrates, okay? Alcohol, all these things are acidic to the body. Doesn't mean you can't have them. But on the other hand, we need to eat foods which are alkalinizing, which reduce pain and inflammation. The plant foods, fruits and vegetables. You see, fruits and vegetables are rich in several nutrients which cause an alkalizing effect in your blood and your tissues. For example, fruits and vegetables are rich in potassium. Potassium is very alkalinizing, okay? As well, these plant foods contain bicarbonate, which is alkalinizing as well, and other minerals like calcium and magnesium. So really the key is to get a balance. Okay, you can have those acidic foods, but neutralize them with these plant foods. So really a simple way to summarize all this and get you into the pH zone is do this. You've got your plate. Half of your plate should be vegetables and fruits, mainly vegetables. A quarter of the plate, protein, and a quarter of the plate, carbohydrates, preferably complex carbohydrates, you know, like whole grains, brown rice. Isn't that simple? Even within days, your pain levels will decrease, your energy levels will go up. Now let me go beyond diet and exercise to help you with joint pain, joint problems. Let me tell you about collagen. <coughs> collagen is a substance in the body which keeps your skin together. It's like a, you know, helps your connective tissue. It's like a glue, keeps your skin and connective tissue together. And collagen is invo involved in the formation of your cartilage. So a very important substance. And as people get older, some people have problems making enough collagen. Recent studies have shown collagen is 240% more effective than the combination of glucosamine sulfate and chondroitin sulfate. Also, cold laser therapy. So basically, we have the technology, and a lot of professional athletes have this done, and you can too, by local practitioners. You basically concentrate the laser over the area of injury. You don't feel any pain, you can't burn the patient, and what it does, it naturally reduces inflammation and stimulates tissue healing. See, we can use natural things with modern science and get great therapeutic effects. Now let's move on to a very big topic, and that's diabetes. Diabetes is an epidemic, not just in the United States, but around the world. It has exploded, both in children and adults. Why is that? Well, it comes down to a couple factors, and they correlate to one another. That is what they're eating and a person's weight, right? So as you put on weight, it's harder for your body to maintain good blood sugar balance. And 70% of Americans are overweight. Here's another very important thing. One in four Americans has pre-diabetes. So what do, I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, pre-diabetes is the stage right before diabetes. So your blood sugar levels are elevated, but not at the level of diabetes. And what's going to happen, it's already starting to cause damage inside your body. You see, when your blood sugar levels go up, your body responds by doing what? It causes the hormone insulin to be secreted by your pancreas to get that blood sugar in your cells. But the hormone insulin is inflammatory. So if you've got blood sugar problems and your insulin levels are going up, it creates more inflammation. 
That's when your blood sugar is not in balance. You can get joint pain. You can get brain problems. You can get heart problems just from your blood sugar problems. So it's important that we correct that. Let me tell you about a patient of mine by the name of Carolee. She's in her mid-60s. She was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. That's the type of diabetes, usually you're on medication, not necessarily insulin, but on medication from your doctor. So she came to see me. I changed her diet, changed her exercise around a little bit, got her on some blood sugar lowering supplements, which I'll talk about, and she lost 60 pounds. She no longer has type 2 diabetes. She's on no pharmaceutical medications. Matter of fact, she doesn't have pre-diabetes. She has normal glucose levels. So again, this isn't just unique to my patients. Doctors around the country are doing this, and you can do it too. Okay? Let me talk to you a bit more about diet. You know, a recent study found that non-diabetics at high cardiovascular risk, when they ate a Mediterranean diet, you know what a Mediterranean diet is? You get fish, lots of fruits and vegetables, you have some olive oil, spices, uh, low to moderate amounts of lean poultry. And they found that these people who followed the Mediterranean diet had half the incidence of new onset diabetes over four years compared to those on a low fat diet. Okay, so you often hear about the Mediterranean diet preventing and treating heart disease, which it's very good for, but look, it can have tremendous effects for your blood sugar balance. And with a lot of people with blood sugar problems, to make it easier for them to get results much quicker, I use other natural healing agents. For example, chromium. The mineral chromium has been shown in studies to lower blood sugar levels in people with diabetes. Even if you don't have diabetes and you get blood sugar swings, chromium can help you. And the way chromium works as a mineral, it helps your insulin transport your blood sugar into your cells so it can be burnt for fuel more effectively. Remember, what happens if your blood sugar doesn't get into your cells to be burnt for energy? Your body stores it as fat, right? So just a simple mineral helps a lot of people and for you people out there who crave sweets a lot, it really helps to reduce your cravings. Find that with a lot of patients. Now there are some very good soluble fiber supplements you can take. Now soluble fiber is found in foods like legumes, oatmeal for example. So when you have that with the food you eat, it slows down blood sugar absorption into your bloodstream. So your blood sugar levels don't spike and your insulin level doesn't go up. As well, I use something called pine bark extract. And remember, these things have studies behind them. And pine bark extract has been shown to lower glucose levels significantly in people with type 2 diabetes. And the other benefit is it's great for naturally improving circulation, which often is compromised in people with type 2 diabetes. Now, we all know that exercise is important in controlling your blood sugar levels, right? I mean, it just makes rational sense. You're going to burn up blood sugar more easily. But here's a simple tip. If you have diabetes, prediabetes, Here's a very simple tip most people aren't aware of. Just walk. It doesn't have to be vigorous walking. Just walk. Light walking for 10 to 15 minutes after each meal. You'll find on average your blood sugar will not jump up 20 to 40 points like it typically does. Just that simple. So let me talk about something affecting millions of Americans, and that's heart disease. Right? And remember, heart disease is intricately tied into inflammation. So if you have inflammation in your arteries, what happens? You get plaque building up in your arteries. You get plaque building up in your arteries, you're going to have restricted blood flow to your heart, and you can have a heart attack, right? Or you can have a stroke. So we've got to address that inflammation. And remember, heart disease is the number one worldwide killer of both men and women. And more than one in four deaths in the United States are due to heart disease. But here's the thing. Most forms of heart disease they can be prevented or treated. So you can heal your heart disease. How do we do that? Well, let me get into some very interesting areas here. 50% of people that have a heart attack have normal cholesterol levels. You see, the standard lipid panel has been shown to have a 40% predictive value for coronary heart disease. Okay, only 40%. But newer testing I'm going to talk about can identify up to 90% of people at risk for heart disease. You see, you have different types of LDL cholesterol. You don't just want to know the total amount. You want to know the LDL density pattern. So you have pattern A, pattern A, B, and B. Pattern A is the best, A, B is kind of in the middle, and B is the worst. You need to have that tested. Why? Because you may think, well, my LDL cholesterol is in a normal range. 
But if you have the bad pattern, the pattern B, you can still form plaque in your arteries. And there's things nutritionally you can do to change that. One of which is bring down your blood sugar level. You actually can change patterns just by doing that. Okay? And by the way, this kind of thing, the next five to 10 years, it's going to be standard. But why wait? Work on your health now. The other one I want to talk about is HDL cholesterol. See, I see patients, they come in and they say, well, my HDL cholesterol, it's really good. It's in the normal range. Is that a high number? That's great. And yeah, that is good. But let's look at your breakdown of your HDL. So you have different HDL particles. HDL1, number two, number three. And number two is the most protective. So what I see with some patients, their total HDL is good, but they have low HDL2 cholesterol. And it's the HDL2 which is most protective against heart disease. It takes the cholesterol out of the arteries, back to your liver. So very, very important. And you can use the B vitamin. The B vitamins, niacin, for example, is very effective. Niacin does what? Well, it lowers your total cholesterol, lowers your LDL, increases your HDL, but it helps those particles I'm talking about, that LDL density pattern and increasing that good HDL too. And you know, it's used in conventional medicine as well. There's just so many good studies on it. Also, you need to improve the levels of your omega-3 fatty acids. You see, you see studies show people with the lowest levels of omega-3 fatty acids, you know those good fats like in cold water fish, salmon, sardines, trout for example, even walnuts. People with the lowest levels have the highest rates of sudden heart attacks. Why would that be? Well, remember these omega-3 fatty acids, they naturally thin the blood, they help your heart to beat with normal rhythm, and they decrease inflammation in your heart and your arteries. Okay, so powerful, powerful food medicines. As well, good old vitamin C, it's been shown to cut the risk of heart disease by 45%. That's been shown in a UCLA study. But what if you're one of these people who have genetically high cholesterol? It doesn't mean you can't use natural agents to normalize your cholesterol. I do it with patients all the time. Because remember with the statin drugs, yeah, they can really lower your cholesterol levels quite significantly. But what are the risks with those? Well, muscle damage, liver damage, kidney damage, and by the way, it can also hinder your memory, studies show. So why don't we try natural approaches first before going on to those drugs? So what I use with patients, for example, I'll use red yeast rice extract. And I find with patients we can normalize their genetically high cholesterol levels within two months. A new study in the American Journal of Cardiology showed that red yeast rice extract cut the risk of dying from stroke or diseases like cancer by 48% and lowers your risk of dying from a heart attack by 37%. Do you know of any drug that can do that? Okay. So you don't see these on the drug ads on TV, but look at, and that's in a mainstream medical journal for cardiologists. Let me tell you about a, a testimonial I got from a patient. And this is how it reads. I have had elevated cholesterol for over 10 years, and I have been on four different statins. They gave me severe leg pain. After reading an article by Dr. Stengler, I took his advice and added red yeast rice, CoQ10, and a thyroid supplement to my daily regimen. In three months, my cholesterol dropped from 269 to 202, and my LDL dropped from 164 to 102. I feel great and have no side effects. See, it can be done. Let me give you some other powerful ways to reduce the chances of developing heart disease and reverse damage. Okay? Magnesium. You know, the mineral magnesium, a lot of people are low in in America. They really are. Because you get magnesium in what? Whole grains and some vegetables, which a lot of people aren't eating. And stress burns up magnesium. And blood pressure medications burn up your magnesium. A lot of people are low in magnesium and you need it for the heart to contract with good strength and normal regularity. Also, coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 is a nutrient naturally found in the body, and your heart cells need it to produce energy. It's important. Also, CoQ10 reduces blood pressure, gives you more energy in your cells. It's a great supplement. So if you currently have any form of cardiovascular disease, you should be on coenzyme Q10, without a doubt. Also, vitamin K. You don't hear much about it, but vitamin K is critical for your arteries. Matter of fact, studies have shown 
people that have the lowest levels of vitamin K are more apt to develop plaque in their arteries. You see, vitamin K has an anti-inflammatory effect, and it keeps, it keeps uh, calcium from building up in your arteries. Very, very important. You get that in green vegetables, of course, and also some of these fermented foods. For example, like natto, traditional Japanese food, you can get in health food stores. Of course, you can always supplement it. You can get multivitamins. You can get it by itself. You wouldn't use it, though, if you're on a blood thinning medication. <coughs> of course, you need to get regular exercise. Everyone knows that. And use stress reduction techniques regularly. Okay? Keep that stress down. Coming up, I'll show you how rebalancing your hormones can reduce stress, depression, and fatigue, and increase your sex drive, energy, and improve your memory.